Welcome to Book Reviews by the Armed Historian, and I am the Armed Historian. Welcome, welcome. This is my very first podcast that I've ever done and my very first book review. Now, it seems a bit odd that my very first book is going to be something that is not my typical genre to read, but this book was lent to me by a friend several months ago, and it was a really great book, and I honestly need to uh, get the book back to her. So tonight's book review is a health-related book titled Not a Diet Book by James Smith. The subtitle is Lose Fat, Gain Confidence, and Transform Your Life. This book was lent to me by a friend who said the book revolutionized her way of thinking about weight loss, specifically the chapter at the end of the book called Female Weight Loss is what transformed her way of thinking, and we will definitely discuss this chapter later on. Pretty much you can sum up this book as having one main principle, and that is burning more calories than you consume equals weight loss. All of the diets out there, whether keto, Weight Watchers, Octavia, Mediterranean, Paleo, and honestly, folks, I'm not sure if I'm saying that word correctly, but whatever the diet is, fad diet or otherwise, James Smith says they all boil down to this one principle. These diets are presenting their own weight to you to help you consume fewer calories than your body burns in a day. He then explains to his readers how to break down the calories that your body burns in a day into four different categories. And I found this super interesting and helpful. I'm sure you could Google this information and find it elsewhere. And perhaps you already know of these categories, but I didn't when I read this book. And so it was new information to me and very helpful. So here they are. Category number one, basal metabolic rate or BMR for short, are the calories that you burn doing nothing. These are the calories that your body burns in order to keep you alive. You are burning calories by breathing, by your heart pumping, and by your other organs functioning in their God-given capacity. Category number two is the exercise activity thermogenesis, or EAT. These are the calories that you burn during your exercise routine. Be sure not to leave exercise out of your daily routine, folks. It's super important. Category number three is the thermic effect of food, or TEF. These are the calories that your body burns digesting your food. And fun fact, perhaps you already know this, but I didn't. Protein is harder for your body to digest than fat. So by consuming more protein and less fat, you're actually burning more calories. On page 62, James Smith says around 30% of the calories consumed in protein are lost or broken down purely in digesting that food. Finally, we have category number four, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT, NEAT. And this is the category that the author wants you to focus on the most, because this is the category that you can do the most to change to increase the number of calories burned. And these are the calories burned doing activity not related to exercise. We are a very sedentary culture. We sit a lot. So get up and move your body, my dear listeners. Move more today than you moved yesterday. Are you going to the store? Park in the back of the parking lot and walk a little farther to get inside the store, the author tells you. Get creative and find more ways to move throughout the day. All of those calories will add up to the grand total of calories burned in a day. Incidentally, those fitness watches are great tools to help you track all of these things. My husband bought me one of those watches made by Apple, and I absolutely love it. Highly recommend it. Now, I read this book quite some time ago, a few months back, so I'm being very broad in summing up this book now and mentioning to you the things that had the greatest impact on me are the things that I remember the most now a few months after the fact. I would encourage you to go and get the book and read it for yourself and you'll glean a lot more that way. Now let's skip ahead to my favorite chapter in the whole book, the one that transformed my friend's way of thinking and mine as well, female fat loss starting on page 261. Guess what folks, men and women are different. No kidding, you may say, but in a society that wants to erase those God-given differences, I'm going to say it again, louder for the folks in the back. Women and men are different. James Smith gives the following statistic. If a man and a woman consume the same number of calories, it'll take the woman a third longer to burn those calories off than it will take the man. 
So let's talk about how we women think about the weight that we are losing. And this is the game changer, ladies. You need to factor in your monthly cycle. Your monthly cycle has a huge impact on how your weight loss is fluctuating. James Smith uh, spent a great deal of time researching this, and this chapter of the book is absolutely phenomenal. I had never been told this before reading this book. I tried Octavia for a couple of months about a year ago. It's very expensive, so I wasn't able to continue it long term. I kind of used it to jumpstart things for myself. But anyway, there was a Facebook support group that you could join while on Octavia, and the people would post their successes as well as their discouragements. And I'm generalizing here, but I would have to say that the majority of the people who were discouraged were women, and they were more often than not complaining about the difference in their weight loss week to week or about the plateau that they had hit that they didn't have the week before. So maybe they lost six pounds last week, but only lost one pound this week, or maybe they even hit a plateau this week. Everyone in the group was very nice, encouraging, supportive, and would tell these discouraged uh, participants to keep on track and stick to the plan, which of course is good advice. But never once did I see or hear anyone say what James Smith says in this book. Your body is changing week to week throughout your cycle because of your cycle. And it's prone to put on a little weight at a certain point in the cycle and prone to lose a little more at another point in your cycle. So if you want to accurately track or judge your weight loss progress, you should not be comparing your weight loss week to week and definitely not day to day. Rather, you should compare your weight during week one of your cycle to week one of next month's cycle and compare week two to week two. Don't compare one week or rather week one to week two, your body's at a different point in your monthly cycle and it's not going to be an accurate comparison unless you're comparing the same point of your cycle to the same point of your cycle. I found this to be super helpful and interesting because I've been there myself, weighing myself day to day or week to week. I'd be losing weight so well and then, oh my goodness, I hit a plateau. I don't understand. I would get super discouraged, uh, even down on myself. Um, So I found this very helpful uh, to look at it in light of this new information. So overall, I would say this is a really great book, a lot of really good information. And I would encourage you to go and read it for yourself because it's definitely worth the read. Now, there was one aspect of the book that I did take issue with. As a Christian, I must filter everything that I read, hear, or experience through God's standard as he defines it in the Bible according to his law. So, a large portion of the book was lifestyle advice, bedtime and sleep routine, finding work that you love, etc., and how these things can also affect your weight loss. However, at one point he said, if anything in your life is not making you happy, get rid of it. And while that may work in some aspects, it doesn't work across the board, which is how he seemed to want to apply it. He specifically said, if you have a spouse that isn't making you happy, get rid of your spouse. And obviously that's not biblical. The Bible says marriage is supposed to last a lifetime. It is a covenant between you, your spouse, and God. It's a three-way relationship. At least that's how it's supposed to be, the way God designed it to be. So if your spouse is no longer making you happy, instead of just getting rid of them, you should try to figure out what is wrong in your relationship and try to mend it. Anything worth having, such as a good marriage, is worth working for. So I definitely disagreed with that. Generally speaking, I would say there's something small in your life that's not making you happy. You could do well to get rid of it, but there are a lot of things that God places in our life, responsibilities relationships that you don't just get rid of because they're not making you happy. Um, There's troubles throughout life and we're to um, meet them head on as God designed and with his help and the leading and advice that we get from his word. So if you get the book and read it, there is a lot of good weight loss advice in there, especially if you're a female, you got to read the chapter about female weight loss. That was super good. But when it comes to lifestyle advice, take it all with a grain of salt. I hope you get a chance to read it and enjoy.